In this video, I will show how to perform fast manual lesion segmentation using ITK SNAP. What you see here is a simple nifty file from a patient with stroke. Uh, if you have ITK SNAP installed, you can just double click it and ITK SNAP will open. Now, this is the graphical interface of ITK SNAP. The first thing you need to do is reset the boundaries for the signal so you can uh, brighten a little bit up the image. So we can do it by going here and then going into contrast and then just dragging this um, plot here to have to cover the whole histogram. Now everything is a little brighter. The first step when you perform manual lesion segmentation is to form an idea of how the lesion is uh, is shaped in 3d space so you don't just start immediately to draw your lesion in one of the planes but first you form an idea so you go in each of the plane you try to understand where is the lesion so in in um, a sagittal view this is part of the lesion in coronal view you know that the lesion should be here and this is in axial view and you can loop a little bit around to try to understand in particular the difficult parts where you are not yet sure if it's lesion or not for example here uh, it's uh, a bit unclear to me whether it's lesion or not now note i'm not an expert uh, lesion uh, segmentator i'm not an expert rater of the lesions uh, but i just want to show you how quickly uh, lesions can be um, drawn in itk snap now the first step once you uh, have have formed an idea of how the lesion is created in 3d space you can start to draw the lesion now itk snap has a, a segmentation feature and has a segmentation menu uh, what the segmentation is is nothing else but another image uh, that is overlaid on top of yours and when you start to draw on this image you'll actually changing the values of the voxels in this hypothetical virtual empty image now the way to do that is by choosing the active label the foreground or, or active label uh, the labels have name here and you can simply select label one which comes by default this means that the voxel values where you draw will take the value one and that's what we need for a segmentation the background or the paint over label uh, is uh, very helpful if you do more complex segmentations and uh, allows you to select on which other value you're drawing for example normally we draw on, simply on label zero, zero uh, and you can select clear label but you can uh, draw on all labels or whatever values you you, you put the uh, pan on uh, or on a specific other label so let's put all labels for now uh, we don't need anything else now for the lesion segmentation, it's very important that you use a pen. In this moment, I'm using a Microsoft Surface, which comes with a pen. And this uh, speeds up the drawing of the lesion uh, by quite some bit. Now, let's uh, we'll do the lesion segmentation in one of the planes. So let's select which plane we are going to draw the lesion. A lot of people draw the lesions in um, axial plane and that's what we are going to do now so now that we have formed an idea where the lesion is we can still come back in the 3d view but for now let's make this axial uh, plane um, occupy the whole screen and now we, we can go back and forth with this um, slider on the side and let's start you can start somewhere even even where you're sure that there is a lesion and you can start to draw how do you draw you go in polygon mode and from this moment on you can simply use your um, pencil or your mouse cursor if you're using a desktop to start to draw uh, the boundaries of what you think is the lesion and that's what I'm doing now Now, once you have kind of completed that, that slice, you want to enclose the area of the lesion. If it didn't close by itself, you can press down here, complete, and one more time, accept, and this is your slice. Now, the exact rules on how to draw lesions 
uh, are beyond the scope of this video. There is a very nice paper from, I believe, Cranion 2013, which explains the rules to draw lesions. Uh, typically, you, you may want to get a little more of this um, darkened white matter edema part or less. It depends on how your lab wants to perform it. Now, uh, here comes the interesting part of ITK SNAP, which helps you uh, segment the lesion much faster than before. Normally, you draw the lesion on every slice, and there can be hundreds of slices, uh, or if uh, in the future the resolution of images get much better, for example at 0.5 millimeters, you'd get more and more slices to draw. Now, um, ITK SNAP has a very interesting feature which can uh, interpolate the segmentation, which is this one here, interpolate the labels in a specific plane. So what we're going to do is not draw on every slice, but draw every few slices. So I'm going here at another slice, further in there, and I'm going to draw another area of the lesion. Very good. And here a another one. Okay. And here another one. You can be a little more careful when drawing lesions that I am being now. Okay. And here a little more. Note that in any moment you can press the button on the upper right and see the slices of the lesions in other planes as well or if you don't understand the lesion very well, the shape of a lesion, you go back here and you can still loop, uh, go back in the cursor inspector mode and you can loop around to see the shape of the lesion if you're uncertain if one certain point is lesion or not. Now let's go back in our axial space and let's go back in our polygon mode. What I'm going to do now is try to fill all the uh, missing slices up uh, onto the inferior portion of, of the brain. And, and then I'm going to go all the way superior. Now when you draw in this way it's important that you label from the very top slice to the very bottom slice. And why is that? That is because when you interpolate the slices, uh, the computer and the software doesn't know if, if it has to go back down for the slice. It will go until the last slice, the most inferior slice that you have drawn, and it will stop there. So it, the, the lesions typically become smaller and smaller and that's why you need to go until that final slice you, where you think there is a lesion to draw. I'm not sure if this is coming across as an idea. Now look at the lesions, uh, at the lesion, uh, how it's changing shape. Now, I'm not doing a very good job at trying to follow the shape of this lesion, but normally you should be careful because we are going to try to interpolate the lesions on all the slices. So if there are sudden changes of shape uh, from one slice to the other or from one drawing to the other, that's not going to serve well our um, interest of drawing the lesion. So now we see that we have a bunch of uh, slices up here that needs to be drawn and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, note that the drawing of all these um, edema, dark matter, dark white matter areas, uh, it's kind of elusive also to the expert reader. So you may want to consult with someone who has done this for a while, you may want to get some training. Okay, now we're going this upper slice is here. 
I believe this is part of a lesion. Now note that I'm not uh, spending too much time in, in checking that the lesion is truly there, but you may spend a little more to double check where you draw that actually it's really lesion holding there. Actually, let's see if we can also include this part. Okay, now we have still some lesion here. Normally, I would be a little more careful in trying to avoid the sudden changes in shape. You see this, this change in shape here? And create something in, the, in between, which is a shape that could accommodate both the upper one and the lower one. Okay, so we have a bunch of slices. Um, every, let's see. So we have one here in slice 94. We have another here in slice 89. So it's about fi every five slices, every six, every seven. You can uh, follow a specific protocol with a very specific number of slices. So what we're going to do now is use a fast interpolation tool, interpolate labels. We'll interpolate label one with label one. We'll interpolate on a single axis. We'll interpolate on the axial. And before I show you that, let's switch to the three dimensional view. And uh, to see how um, how the whole lesion shape will change. Okay, we are, I'm back at the interpolate labels, which is under the tools menu. We'll interpolate along a single axis, and that will be the axial, because that's how we drew. And let's make the interpolation, and voila. This is the lesion segmentation, switch back here. Uh, created with the lesion interpolation with the I'm, I'm sorry the segmentation interpolation method in ITK snap uh, this is all I believe this was very fast you may spend about 10 to 20 minutes for a full lesion but as you can see uh, drawing only just a few slices helps a lot and uh, uh, as I mentioned I don't typically draw lesions myself I typically find them already drawn, but uh, you can, with time, you'll get better and better on uh, uh, following certain rules to avoid some sudden changes in the shape of the lesion in certain areas. And once you interpolate like this, you can still uh, keep drawing to fill the lesion in other axes. The next question you may have is, well, can I draw on another axis, like for the example, the coronal here, and interpolate again? Maybe yes, maybe no. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, but this is already a huge improvement in speed for manual lesion segmentation. Thank you.